remember a time when you were maybe in class experiencing something and then you were kind of out in the world in your life and you were like, wow, this, this really translates. This is a, the, the whole approach to improv is something that either I've done my whole life and never thought about it that way or. You know, I went to my first day of class and it was fun but terrifying. And I got to the end and I was like so proud of myself and I was like, as long as they never make me like get up in front of people and sing. I'll be good because that was like I had a terrible experience as a kid and I yeah. was like I will never do that and I showed up for the second week of class and he was like so the second week of class is about uh, getting up and singing in front of people and you like do it as improv and you have to yes. you get forced out into the middle mm -hmm. um, and it was horrific um, yes. but also so fun in that way mm -hmm. that improv can be both terrifying and fun yes. uh, but I think the other big thing is sort of from day one uh, IO's like first rule I think that they mm -hmm. teach. Um, there were several, um, yes. but I think the very first one was you have to accept that everyone is, oh, what is it, it's three, a poet, an artist, and a genius or something mm. like that. Um, and, and what they tell you is like from this point forward, everyone in this class is uh, an artist and a poet and a genius. And you have to believe that because as long as you believe that, you will be able to receive everything they give you as a gift. Mm. And if you don't believe it, you'll see it as an obstacle. And I just remember, I mean, yeah, working in ministry, working on a um, staff team of eight right. ministers, right? Um, that was immediately relevant yeah. to like go back into the next um, staff meeting, worship planning meeting, mm -hmm. right? And shift a posture away from uh, sort of preparing yourself for right. the thing what are they going to say now? Yeah. yeah. And instead be like, what if I really did move through the world and believe that people were as much a poet and artist and a genius mm -hmm. as I am and that I am as much as yes. other people are. How does, uh, you, you mentioned that you were interested and in, intrigued by improv and also reticent about it because of kind of perfectionist tendencies that you mm -hmm. have. Um, and how has that changed with that language of improv, I mean, does yeah, I actually think that's maybe been the most um, transformative thing mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it it is funny because it's like you know I think in a lot of uh, I think with OCD and with social anxiety and with various sort of anxiety disorders, immersion therapy is is one mm -hmm. of the at least that was one of the things I was taught to do a long time ago. Like yeah. force yourself to do the thing that. Uh -huh. um, terrifies you not so that you learn how to like not do that but so that you confront the thing that you're actually afraid of and mm. you you don't die from it right yeah, right and so I think what was most transformative for me with that regard uh with improv was that I did fail just a whole bunch um and I'm like <laughs> you know I would say I'm a, a middling improv performer right. like I'm not there are people in my class who like just had all the right instincts yes, you know and yeah. um and some of them came from more of a background um, and I was, I was not, I didn't always freeze up on stage. I mm -hmm. didn't always have nothing to say. Yeah. Um, sometimes I did. Sometimes it just like totally went yeah. to a weird place. Um, and you do that enough times and you, I don't know. It's like you learn that you can survive failure. Mm -hmm. And then you think, wow, like how many things could I do? if I wasn't afraid yeah. of what failure would look like. Not because I don't think I'll fail, but because I know it's not the end of the world, right? Yes, um. yes. Yeah, just the other day I read an article about um, that maybe one of the keys to success is to set failure goals, to like a quota, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I wanna try, and it was in the context of writing mm -hmm. uh, and submitting your writing that will either be accepted or rejected. And if you get it, I mean, if you just say I wanna, I want to get rejected a hundred times this year, you know, mm -hmm. somebody is going to, I mean, that, that's probably going to find a footing somewhere. So, and now you work as a journalist mm -hmm. um, and write and, and cover a lot of faith issues and justice and that intersection between them. Um, but I'm curious how, how you see the intersection of improv and, and writing and journalism mm -hmm. maybe in particular. Yeah, I think um, I see it particularly clearly with journalism, I think, because you're, it's a responsive field, right? And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not a, a breaking news outlet, so we have a little bit more bandwidth to kind of think through um, what we're working on. But still, you wake up in the morning and you have no idea 
what the relevant topics of the day are going to be. And by 9 a.m., everything has shifted. Or um, at 4.50 on a Friday afternoon, everything (laughs) shifts. Right. Um, And so being able to sort of think on your feet quickly, um, collaborating with, Mm -hmm. at least at my job, we have a really collaborative team. And so Mm -hmm. um, being able to sort of feed off of each other's energy and think outside the box about... um, ways to respond to mm-hmm. a new story with our angle, how yeah. to find people um, that would be a good contributor, whatever. Um, so yeah, I think in that way, just that sort of yes and mentality mm-hmm. is really um, helpful because otherwise you could just drown in all the yeah. Um, yeah. right news that you could and couldn't cover and mm-hmm. whatever else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, and I think too, I mean, one of the other keys of improv is just being very attentive to what's happening on stage or what's happening in life. And, and I think that's the kind of skill that I really value in good journalism that sees things in a way that I wouldn't or is telling a story that no one else is telling, you know, and that kind of thing. And I think yeah. that's part of your role too. Yeah, it makes me think. I mean, I work specifically with audience engagement, right? And so I function as sort of the liaison between my team and the people who read what we publish. Mm -hmm. And um, it kind of reminds me, you know, one of the early lessons of improv is this idea of if you stand there with your scene partner and you're trying to think of what your next move is going to be, then you're going to miss their move. And so then you're lost and you can't respond to what they've done. You have to be... Um, both actively listening and mm-hmm. then ultimately uh, agile and responsive yeah. uh, to whatever they produce. And so in terms of our audience, I think that posture is helpful as far as being open to mm-hmm. what you're receiving as yeah. feedback from um, what from your audience about what matters to them mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. what doesn't and yes. what um, upsets them and what <laughs> gives them hope. And, right. and then, you know, of course... In this job, there is obviously still some behind-the-scenes planning that's mm-hmm. happening already, but right. but a willingness to make a change, mm-hmm. um, even mm-hmm. if you don't have a plan for that. Yeah, right. Knowing a change is needed and that you'll figure, figure out what the path is. Mm-hmm.